you guys yeah. are targeting generally everyone who can run, walk, or you know, I'd stroll yeah. um, without yeah. having to worry about a phantom wallet or blockchain fees or any of that sort of stuff. Hey you guys, it's me again, the Metaverse Explorer. We have another interview for you. This time we're interviewing Stepin by Find Satoshi Labs. I don't know if you guys know, but these guys are making waves in Solana at the moment. They won the fourth place in the gaming track for the Solana Ignition Hackathon. On the left hand of the screen, we have uh, Yorn. Is that your actual name, Yorn? Uh, yes. Yon, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, so I'm uh, Metaverse Explorer. So on the left hand side of the screen, you can see the video chat. On the right hand of the screen, you can see their dev post where you saw they won the fourth, uh, fourth place. Uh, you can also see their Twitter. We have uh, 11,000 followers at the moment. Their Discord has about 10,000 uh, members at the moment. And you can see their website at the top here where they give you a small uh, brief introduction to step in. And we can see the team here, Jerry Huang, Yon, Kevin, and Leo Lin. So we're talking to Yon at the moment, who is the CEO. Yon, how are you going? Yeah, very good. How are you? Uh, good, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. No worries. Yeah, so um, so Yon, uh, let's talk a little bit about you, you yourself. Let's talk about uh, your history in cryptocurrency, and let's talk about your product and your team. So let's start by with you. Okay, so I started doing crypto around 2017, and I started a business called Crypto SA, stand for Crypto South Australia. So we start doing farming market investment, and then later in 2019, after the crypto winter, we went into the Bitcoin Ethereum mining, and then later into the DeFi and uh, liquidity mining. So we've been doing sort of okay. And then around the end of this year, I started to chat to, with my neighbor, which happened to be a game developer. Oh, nice. Uh, about Axie. Yeah. And then we said, what about we doing our, you know, a, a game for ourselves? You know, I know crypto, you know, games. So here we are, you know, doing the step in. Nice. Very nice. So, so you, you mentioned uh, he was actually your neighbor and was interested yes, in, uh, in gaming. Years. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Small world. Uh, what about the other people on your team? So who was that? Was that Jerry or Kevin or Leo? Yes, Jerry. So what happened is uh, Jerry has his own uh, game studio and uh, his game studio based in China, about 10 people, you know, small team. And I have my crypto team in Australia. So we merged these two group of people together and we have around 20 people now working this project. And they all, so they know game and they know crypto and also they know blockchains. Ah, awesome, awesome. So is this a, uh, like an actual partnership or a merging of the two companies? Uh, it is actually, we merge it because we actually, we did build up housekeeping, we clear what we're doing and then we full time doing this project together. Ah, interesting, interesting, awesome. Okay, so we have um, on the website here, um, Step N. Can you tell us about the product you guys won this fourth prize for in the Solana Ignition gaming track? So what is Step N and what is uh, Find Satoshi Labs? I guess that's your parent company. Yes, so, um, so this is a move to earn game on mobile devices. So you have the NFT element. It also has an element that to curb the global warming where the governance token holder will decide how to distribute the game's profit, where they can decide a portion of them going to buy the carbon credit and burn them. And then portion of the profit will be shared by all the governance token holders. So basically we encourage the non-crypto player runners to participate in the GameFi project and start to earn token. So once they earn token, they're more motivated to cash out on exchange, and then we can essentially convert them into a fresh crypto, say, trader or player. So basically, we are trying to expand the uh, entire crypto community by adopting, you know, millions and millions of uh, people doing exercise, because when they're affected by COVID, most of them can only run outdoors. Yep, that's right. That's right. So I want to break it down a little bit further. Let's uh, sure. clarify it. So. You have a uh, an application out there that you can download on your uh, mobile or uh, what mobile uh, phone, and when you go running, you are able to uh, accrue some tokens. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, so when they accrue these tokens, how does it actually work? Does it go to their phone? Is it on the blockchain? And are there NFTs involved? Can you talk to us a little bit about that first? Yes. So we have a dual token system and dual NFT system. So dual token means we have a game token where the player will run to earn the game token. And is that the GST? Token, yes, that's a GST. And then the game token will be used to say upgrade your NFT sneakers or to, um, uh, to, to what we call the shoe minting, to, to mint new NFT sneakers, uh, to level up 
um, to insert like uh, special gems onto the NFT sneaker uh, to repair them to participate uh, the online marathon, which is a form of uh, like a PVP basically. So we create a lot of user cases for the game token so that people can um, earn them and sell it to others that burn and make new sneakers. And then we also have a governance token, which basically will be uh, decide on the game's profit and also do the carbon offsetting thing. And also we have a dual NFT system. So we have a uh, NFT sneakers, which come in four different types with walker, jogger, runner, and trainer, where uh, we design that to suit different finish levels. So uh, you can you can have a runner and can start to run within certain speed, or you have a walker, basically just walk to make uh, token earnings. Right. And we also have a NFT badge, which is an achievement badge, which you have to uh, to to for very difficult to achieve. Say run um, ten thousand kilometer, for example. Milestones. Uh, you will have like a, yeah, like a milestone badge where we'll give you in-game perks. For example, you earn extra say one percent, or you have extra energies. Nice. That sounds like there's a fully fleshed out kind of uh, uh, economic uh, kind of tokenomics all behind it. So you have two yeah. tokens, which is the GST and the GMT. You did mention the sneaker NFTs. Where do those sneaker yeah. NFTs come from? Do you have to mint we them? Do, yeah, we have. We will sell a very small number in the beginning, and then player can mint the uh, sneaker. Uh, uh, so basically, by uh, according to like two vintage sneakers, and then burn some token, you mint one extra sneakers and then you can put that sneaker on the market to sell or to rent yep and and talk to us about the renting feature so you don't have to actually come into this to buy a sneaker you can rent your no. sneaker from someone else and actually start exactly. going running exactly so we designed that because we because there's no way that we make non-crypto people to adapt to a game five project say they have to learn how to use a decentralized wallet they don't have to like deposit money to buy the the, the, and have the asset and transfer it's too much so they need to, need to press one button to rent the sneaker actually against a default, like, uh, like a social credit of their own. And if they uh, rent it and not running, their social credit will decrease and then nobody wants to rent their sneaker anymore. Oh, so they so have to have rent whole, and run. Yeah. You have a whole like a uh, whole uh, kind of a social system behind it as well. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, you have a low social rating. Nobody wants to deal business with you. Or if you <laughs> keep your social rating, then people want to rent like even like a lower price because they they know they're gonna rent in, in, you know uh, as a grade by the smart contract. So uh, in the end, smart contract will split. Uh, portion go to the runner, portion go to the sneaker owner. Awesome, awesome. That's that sounds like you fully fleshed out the system behind it. I'm yep. excited to try yep. and run the, run with this myself. Um, so let's actually uh, shift gears as well. Let's talk about the Solana Ignition Hackathon that you guys were in. Can you talk to us about the decisions you guys made to lead up to you winning the the fourth prize in the gaming track? So I think I think it's to do with execution and efficiency. So we literally started the project in end of August almost at the beginning of September. So we basically work so hard and uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, changing to the game to refine them. And uh, we've actually been told that there's a ignition around the 15th of October ish. Yep. So we don't have much time to prepare for it. So we took us one day to shoot that demo video and then uh, took us about two days uh, to develop a demo version and where we can actually record it. So it, it, it just, Happen. It has to be executed like uh, really fast and really effectively for us actually to, to even uh, meet the deadline. Almost. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So uh, I think I think we make decision fast and we execute fast. I think that that's one key element for us to win the uh, hackathon. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's something we can take away a lot because uh, a lot of these uh, crypto teams and uh, smaller startups, they have very like uh, fast execution rate. You have to be able to move very fast in Solana because, you know, the blockchain and crypto just moves super fast in general. So you have exactly. to be able to adapt very easily. Um, OK, so um, uh, tell us about winning the hackathon. What's happened to your small community after you've uh, won the fourth place hackathon? Actually, we have a pretty good inflow. Um, Although we actually only just started doing uh, community building for Monday last week. Yeah. So, uh, so we've been trying to promote the brand and the game. And uh, also Hackathon helped us a lot to have a lot of uh, people actually want to awareness. know about us. Yeah, because yes. I can see on the right-hand side here, we're looking at your Twitter followers. You've got 11,000 Twitter followers at the moment. And your Discord has 10,000 followers. So I think that shot up as well after the Ignition Hackathon. Yes. That's incredible work. 
Yes, and we expect to have another shout out once we announce the uh, seed investors. Oh, right. Seed investors as well. So all things looking yep. great from here. That's awesome. It is. Yeah. Okay. So um, so you've got this product out there, um, so, which is a move to earn product. So there are other competitors in the space at the moment, not just on Solana, but uh, a lot of other blockchains as well. Talk to us about uh, who you see your competitors are. I think uh, at the moment, the other competitor is Gino Pets on uh, Solana at the moment. Talk to us mm-hmm. about what differentiates you from Gino Pets or any of the other move to earn um, kind of uh, projects. Yes, actually, it was a funny story that when I tell uh, several capitals we talk in the early stage, say we have a move to earn game, say, are you Juno Pet? I said, well, I'm not Juno Pet. Uh, but Juno Pet has been on the market since for a while. And uh, the idea is uh, you have your uh, sport data, then you export that into a desktop computer where you feed your spirit animal with your, say, uh, 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 health data, yep. where you can grow them. Uh, enter into arena, uh, rest in the habitat. So it, it is very like Axie Infinity type of yep. uh, game where the graphic going to be heavy uh, all because it's on the desktop computer. Yep. And also uh, uh, it, it is adopt that Pokemon Go sort of uh, 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 route. And uh, for us, I think we more like a running app, more like, more like a running companion where we tap into the non-crypto player where uh, when w- w- which they're already using a like a Strava or Nike Run Club, they're already yep. using a running app. So they will use the, our app along with that running app to make some you know tokens and uh, to participate you know the gamification on the uh, Web three basically. So we want to adapt to a mass audience. But GenoPad, the GenoPad issue is I think still they are uh, targeting to people already in the game five. Yeah. Uh, 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 community yeah. that people still have to know how to use Phantom, have to uh, move Solana around, you know, buy their eggs, and so the yeah. target audience is different. So the targeting, the stream is targeting to more uh, like a crypto savvy people. Yep, and we are targeting. Yep, yeah. So we're targeting to a mass population. We want to spread the uh, you know have the reach and penetration. Yeah, I, I would uh, agree with all those points there, um, and that uh, they they are more targeting people who are already familiar with crypto, the crypto verse, whereas you guys mm-hmm. are targeting just generally everyone who can run, walk, or you know, uh, stroll yeah. um, without yeah. having to worry about a phantom wallet or blockchain fees or any of that sort of stuff. Um, exactly. So um, that that brings that brings to mind Axie Infinity as well. So Axie Infinity is a play to earn game, and this is a move to earn. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the differentiation there? Um, yes, and also we want to talk about first the similarities. I yeah, think yeah. We refer heavily to Axie, and we think the. The, there are two vital parts for their success. One is the COVID bring a lot of uh, Filipino people um, to the XA community because they actually can make more in the game compared to work uh, outside the crypto community. And then that just go viral and just so many people join the XA community and yep. make it vibrant. That's number one. So that makes marks the importance of expanding outside the crypto uh, community, outside the comfort zone of us that can really make a difference to a crypto project. That's number one. And number two is, um, with they have to build like the entire infrastructures. Uh, they have their Roni sidechain, they have their wallet. You know, yep. they have now they're going to the DEX. Um, so we refer that as well. So because when I when I was uh, trading back in 20, uh, 2017, uh, transfer between exchanges take like four to eight hours. Oh when no! Crypto, you know, crypto Thank kitty. You. Yeah. Was, uh, you know, you want to buy something, you know, that's going to increase, and uh, and then your phone just wouldn't arrive from one exchange to the other. Very frustrating, but that is the playability issue. We have to build something that is playable, meaning that the transaction cost is low, the transaction speed is fast, and the entire experience is smooth. Yeah. So we built a building wallet within our game. So the building wallet will support the uh, Bitcoin, uh, Solana, and Ethereum. Plus, we will also incorporate a, uh, a, a swap where people can swap assets. Awesome. Also, it cross and convert. So we are packing everything um, player would need uh, to make the transaction easy, fast, convenient into the game so that they don't need to connect to like external wallet. So that makes the entire ex- user experience smooth. More seamless. And that's the, fun- yeah, that's the fundamental of a game to be able to like playable before you say, oh, this is a, uh, addictive or this is, you know, I can make a lot of money out of this. If it is not playable, there's nothing else you can do. You know, there's not enough foundation to build on. 
No, that, and, and, and I think yeah. that that totally makes sense because uh, from a player point of view, like I myself would go running or go playing. It has to be seamless. And uh, since you're building these core pillars into the app already, that makes it a much better user experience for me than to go over to Axie or trade uh, my NFTs or sneakers on the Ethereum blockchain. So, so you did mention the fees are going to be fast and uh, very quick, which is uh, which makes me uh, remind myself of Solana. So, how do you guys yeah. actually uh, do this on the Ethereum blockchain? Because you said your wallet will be no, on no. Ethereum and Solana. No, no, no. Well, well, the main asset will be on Solana, but right. we support cross chain convert uh, to Bitcoin themes. Because uh, for non crypto people, they only know Bitcoins. So our slogan is uh, run and earn Bitcoins. And they understand that. Right, right. Makes more sense now. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, yes, our entire asset is on Solana. Yep. Awesome. Good to know. Um, so let, let's talk a bit about where you guys are actually up to at the moment. So you won your fourth prize. Congratulations again. That's really great news. Um, your beta release has just come out. Is that correct? Yes, yesterday. Can you tell us a bit more about the beta release? So we are doing the whitelist in our Discord. So people invite three people. We'll get them whitelist, whitelisted, and then they can join the whitelist channel to download the game, where we also have to put their email into our whitelist. Then they can, they'll be able to play. So the first day is pretty hectic that uh, we have a lot of bugs need to be sorted out. But we are very optimistic that we can roll out a new feature on a weekly basis. So we estimate we will have the game very much playable in six weeks time, which will then release the retail version. Oh, nice. So there will still be a lot of bugs, uh, at least for this week. But when we do the, uh, like, uh, the patch update next week, uh, like the big patch update next week, uh, it will be much better, and then we'll keep it, you know, uh, rapid um, pace and to 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 uh, improve the awesome. entire game uh, element and also playability. Yes. Awesome. So, so you're aiming for the main uh, app to be uh, in six weeks. Is that correct? Or is that six just to eight second? weeks? Uh, six, six to eight, eight weeks. weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, so can, pretty much. Yeah. So can can people uh, join the beta still at the moment? Is it still open? Yes. Right. Yes, beta will last to last between six to eight weeks. People can join anytime during this beta testing, but we will delete the account. But we will also do like a, a NFT sneaker drop, nice. airdrops to, to all the participants. And then we release the, uh, the retail version where people can, you know, real play on the blockchain. Awesome, awesome. So, so the retail version that comes out and this is going to be on iOS and Android or have you, have you guys uh, not reached that point yet? The iOS, Android, they will, so because this is a crypto game, so we are talk about six months yep. of application to yep. iOS, Android. So that's going to be a lengthy process. So awesome. the game will be downloadable on the website. Uh, at first, it's going to be only Android, and then we will explore how we can add the test flight for iOS. Yep, okay, okay. Um, and uh, so t tell us more about the actual beta. Are people using it? Do you have any metrics for us? How many runners? How many joggers? How many like active wallets? Yes, um, so we are still expanding. So we have a couple hundred people testing at the moment. And we will actually give them random sneakers they can try. So um, so we will, we will monitor on how they perform. You know, are they dropping on their speed? How, because if, you're dro if you have a runner, you drop your speed your earning will be uh, reduced. reduced. You yeah. have to keep at the running speed. Yeah. So uh, we are checking, for example, all the bugs people are reporting. Uh, there were some GPS errors uh, yesterday and then we fixed it today. So we'll have a whole range of uh, bugs or people email been too long. So yeah, there's many, many, many small things need to be fixed. Yeah, that's that's a given. Um, it's a yeah. it's a it's a work in progress. Everything everyone yes. wants everything right now, but this is building in progress, and it does take time to iron out some of these kinks. That's so awesome. Yes. I'm very glad to see that uh, there's been a lot of activity on this, especially on uh, um, on especially on Twitter and especially on Discord. People are very happy to have gotten into this. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead, please. You go. Yeah, I mean, um, the best. I think. I think. The, the, the entire crypto community or industry has go beyond just uh, like a pitch deck. And uh, I think people want to see product and want to feel the product. Yep. I think that that is very important. Uh, maybe that's going to be the norm in the future that you don't have a product, don't even bother to do the fundraising. I think, I think that will make the entire community healthier. Yeah, I, I would totally agree there. We see the amount, the caliber of some of these projects that's increasing mm -hmm. over time. More VCs, investors are getting involved. So people are getting more serious and we're just weeding out all, all the people who aren't really serious. Yes. 
and I, and I can tell you guys are pretty serious back here. Yes, um, yes we are. So, so um, we've talked about what's next for you guys. Do you have any kind of um, feelings or what's happening in Solana at the moment for you? What are you excited about that's happening in Solana? I think uh, the entire, the speed of the ecosystem grow is, is just uh, phenomenal. Um, you know, uh, from the beginning of this year, Solana just came to the market until now, less than a year, you know, yeah. we can see that the ecosystem grow. It is, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so we have several big names, you know, released and before Solana and uh, I think Solana has come out on top of it. So, uh, it, it, so I think it's also to do with the efficiency, it is yep. with the, uh, the, the community driven. Um, and that, uh, you know, uh, listen to the people and also the, uh, uh, especially the developers, um, uh, and help them basically. So, yeah. I, I know from a, I'm not a developer myself, as you guys know, I'm just a YouTube guy, uh, but yeah. from a, from a developer standpoint, what I've heard is that, uh, it, it's a lot easier. It's a lot, uh, I know Rust is hard and you guys are probably programming in Rust as well, but tell us about yeah. the distinction between Rust and, uh, kind of programming on EVM blockchains. Has it been more difficult for you? What's the process been like? I probably gonna get my tech people answering that question. <laughs> so I'm more handling on the crypto investment or like investor relations yep. uh, aspect. I know just a little bit, uh, but it just you know it's it's too shallow. I don't want to. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's uh, fine. Yeah. All right. No so so it's been about uh, twenty minutes so far in the interview. Let's uh, go ahead and start winding down. Um, so can you give us some advice you would give to someone, uh, anyone in crypto or non outside of crypto? Maybe my advice is usually, you know, don't check your portfolio every day because uh, we are in a bull run at the moment. The coins are going up all the time. What advice would you give to someone at the moment? Um, I think I, I have to go back on the learning for me uh, during the crypto winter. So we were, you know, we were fresh investor back in 2017 and everything was shoot up. I was like, oh, awesome. we make 30x. Right, and yeah. Millions. And then back in the 29th, 18th, and 19th, oh, no. loss, you know, all the primary market just collapsed. And yep. then uh, you, you invest in token, they don't release it. When they release it, you know, it's like a vertical down. You lost like 99%. Oh, it's a bad um, feeling. It is. So I think one thing I learned, if that is the case, is that we, we have to look at the macro economies. Yep. Not just don't do tunnel vision in cryptos. Look at what, you know, Fed doing in the U.S., you know what, what what china is doing so just just focus on the macros because the macro will will affect the stock market and then affect the crypto market eventually but again there's so many monies around you know how many is around so even during the 2018 crypto winter we don't f we didn't feel it until around october of 2018 and that at that point i still remember very clearly the ethereum is still five thousand uh, five hundred dollars oh man and then you take a sharp dip to around seventy-five dollars yep. in the early of twenty nineteen. So, remember. so the learning is if the bear come, don't hesitate. Just get enough money to go through the crypto winter and uh, come back. You know, um, when when things around the bottom. But you know, don't don't predict the bottom. Nobody predict the bottom. Uh, just gradually sell, gradually buy, and, and just ride the wave. And, and I think that's that's if I learn anything during the last four years of crypto trading. Or investment, uh, I think that 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 is the learning. You know, just always keep us some cash, just in case. Um, just just withdraw some money, just live your life, and uh, again, don't check your phone on the uh, <laughs> on Bitcoin price every day. You know, uh, yeah. especially to wake up three o'clock in the morning, check on the price. I know. So that that's really that's great advice. Uh, like this is uh, even more so th uh, for me. I agree with that saying. Like uh, you have to treat yourself like a business. You know, you have to have you give yourself some runway to last for a couple of years. You can't just watch your entire investment go down after the market has gone into the great bear. Um, so I think that's yeah. really good advice. Thank you very much for that. No uh, so um, we'll, we'll start wrapping up the interview. Uh, do you have any last words for anyone in your community? Anyone watching on YouTube at the moment? Um, yes, join us on the beta and uh, we'll do airdrops and also we are hiring community managers. If anyone interests, just uh, give us a DM and uh, we'll sort it out. Yeah, sounds good. So guys, uh, everyone watching at home, um, I'm going to leave the links to their Discord here. I'm going to leave to the to the main website, to the uh, uh, tokenomics on the website and also their dev post. So feel free to look at these guys and look at the product that they're trying to uh, give to Solana and actually everyone who runs around the world, which is a whole lot of people. So these guys have really tapped into a, a really nice market. Um, so Yon, uh, thank you very much for coming on, man. Um, 
Morris. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, so this is the Metaverse Explorer. We're going to leave you here now. Uh, so we will probably do, be doing a Grape AMA as well in the coming weeks, um, probably after the Solana um, conference in Lisbon at the moment. Uh, will you be going to Lisbon or anyone from your team going to Lisbon? Yes, we are sending one uh, girl to Lisbon and we will sponsor a night jog in Lisbon and we will do a Lisbon special edition sticker to all ah, the participants. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Be that's great news, man. I, I can't, okay. I myself can't make it to Lisbon because Australia is still uh, closed yeah, down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the girl we sent, we have to get her stay in Lisbon until the 23rd before she can return oh, to Australia. Wow. Otherwise, it'll be a two weeks out quarantine. Yeah, man. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. That's good. Uh, so this has been the Metaverse Explorer. Yon, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. We will talk to you later on. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.